Hello everyone, let's start with Act 5, Scene 1, open page 140. It is the speech of Lorenzo. Sweet soul lets in and they expect their coming. So here he's talking to Jessica and he wants Jessica to go in with him so that they can wait and expect the arrival of Portia and Nerissa inside. Then he says, and yet no matter, why should we go in? However, it does not matter. Why should we go in? My friend Stefano signify, I pray you. Within the house, your mistress is at hand and bring your music forth into the air. So he has ordered or requested Stefano to go inside the house and announce that their mistress is about to arrive and let the musicians play the music. Exit Stefano. So Stefano, he leaves the scene. Now here Lorenzo is actually talking to Jessica. How sweet the moonlight sleeps upon the bank. Here will we sit and let the sounds of music creep in our ears. So he says here, he's talking about the night. He says, how beautiful the moonlight shines on this bank. Let's sit here and let the music fill up. Ears. So he says here, yeah, we can sit here and enjoy the music. We don't have to go inside. We can sit here, enjoy the moonlight and the music. Soft stillness and the night become the touches of sweet harmony. So he says here, yeah, the stillness of the night and the silence, it actually enhances the music, right? The quality of music. So he says that this stillness, it is, you know, the reason why this music sounds more beautiful. Then he says here, sit Jessica. Now he wants Jessica to sit with him. Look how the floor of heaven is thick and laid with patterns of bright gold. So maybe they are looking at the sky and he's telling her, look at the sky, how it is thickly covered with golden pieces now here he, he is referring to the stars okay with the golden stars there is not the smallest orb which thou beholdest but in his motion like an angel sings so he says here these stars and these planets you know when they move they actually move in such a harmony that they you know uh, they create music this is believed that they create music and this music can only be heard by the immortals. Then he says here, still querying to the young-eyed cherubims, such harmony is in immortal souls. But whilst this muddy vesture of decay doth grossly closed it in, we cannot hear it. So he says here, if you believe this, even the smallest star sings like an angel. And... Then he says here, souls have that same kind of harmony. It means souls, the immortal souls can actually hear that harmony. But because these souls are enclosed in our earthly body, we cannot hear those uh, notes or those sounds which are created by stars, planets and orbits. Right? So let's continue with the next speech enter musicians so please understand there was you know uh, when they talk about music it is the job of musicians to play the music so musicians enter in come ho and wake dinah with a hymn with sweet touches pierce your mistress ear and draw her home with music so he says here come and play the music wake up the moon goddess and with a hymn, with a hymn, hymn is actually a religious song. Get her attention and draw her home with music. Right? Let's continue. So finally it is written music. It means finally the musicians, they have started playing the music. Jessica, I'm never merry when I hear music. So maybe Jessica, she doesn't like listening to music. And that's what she says here. That I'm never happy when I hear music. Lorenzo. 
The reason is your spirits are attentive. So he says here that's just because your soul is paying attention to the music. Then he says here, for do but note a wild and wanton hood. So he says here, but you know, I want you to note what a wild and wanton hood. See, uh, I want you to mark one reference here for Dinah 73. Roman goddess, this one, right? And there's one more that I want you to ma uh, mark. 68, according to Elizabethan, right? This one. Now let's continue. So here Lorenzo say, says, take a wild herd of animals or young untrained horses leaping around like crazy, roaring and, you know, uh, roaring loudly, which they have to do because it is in their blood. So here he, now Lorenzo is actually telling Jessica that have you ever seen a herd of animals who are wild? They jump around, they shout, they yell, and they are all untrained. But the moment they hear the sound of the music, they all become silent and calm. So here he is talking about a group of young horses. Then he says here, Why they uh, fetching mad bounds, bellowing and neighing loud means, these horses, they, you know, run around bellowing and neighing and they do that. Why? Which is the hot condition of their blood? Because it is the condition of their hot blood because they are hot blooded animals. If they hear, if they but hear perchance a trumpet sound or any air of music touch their ears. So he says, but by any chance, if any sound of music touches their ears, you shall perceive them make a mutual stand. Then you can actually see them standing cool and in a calm manner. Their savage eyes turn to a modest gaze. Their savage and wild eyes, they turn into a modest gaze. By the sweet power of music. And it happens why? All because of the sweet power of music. Therefore, the poet did feign that Orpheus drew trees, stones and floods. Now that, that is why he says, that is why this poet, you know, uh, he wrote in his poem that Orpheus was the one who had the power to move trees, stones and floods. Now I want you to mark this reference. It is on page 80, I'm sorry, in this, on the same page, 86 and 87. The Roman poet Ovid narrated how Orpheus, a great musician, made trees, stones and streams move from place to place by the power of his music. Right, So he had that power in his music that he could actually move trees, rocks and water. Since not so stockish, hard and full of rage, but music for the time that changed his nature. So he says here why he could do that because there's nothing in this world that is so stubborn, full of rage that it cannot be moved or that it cannot change its characteristics. The man that hath no music in himself nor is not moved with concord of sweet sounds is fit for treason, stratagems and spoils. So he says here, if there's any man who doesn't like music or who is not moved with the sound of music, then that kind of a person is only fit for treason, stratagems and spoils. Means these kind of people, they, they are not at all reliable. They are more into plotting evil or sinister things. The motions of his spirit are dull as night. So emotions here means the movements, the way the souls move. They are dull as night and his affections dark as Erebus. And his emotions, they are dark as Erebus. Erebus is a place near hell. Let no such man be trusted. Mark the music. So he says here, he's telling to Jessica that if a person is like this, then of course this person can never be trusted and I want you to listen to the music. 
enter Portia and Nerissa. Okay, from here, we'll do in our next video. I hope this is clear. I want you to read it from the book and revise it. Please make sure the context given right in front of it is very important. I want you to mark, I'm sure you have marked the important context. Please go through them. They're very important and you should know them. We've done Erebus here. I want you to mark this one as well. It says in classical mythology, the home of the dead, an area of darkness near hell was known as Erebus. And I really want you to mark it, please. Right. The next will continue in the next video. Please go through it nicely. Right. Thank you.